So all these different sensors and systems are connected and the internet of everything talks to everything. The seven OSI layers of the computer model for transmitting, transmitting data, when we got to TCP IP, they, they did compression, they do it for the blockchain, and this is another example of that. So instead of seven layers, the people that don't need to have that many details, they can work with four instead of seven layers. So they're trying to simplify it. What I'm trying to explain to people is down here at the sensing layer, we have your wearable, your video, your drone, those are bio signals. That's why it shows a heart with electrical signals in it. And how quickly we forget, bio signals are signals that can be measured and recorded from living beings and can be either electrical or non-electrical. And the bio signal taxonomy from human activities with all your different accelerometer, gyroscope, video camera, near infrared spectroscopy, mass spectrometer, chemical electrical sensors, surface electrodes, magnetometer, microphone, sonograph, thermometer, thermal camera, to be turned into from a biological signal to a digital signal for the biological to digital convergence, kinematic, optical, chemical, electrical, acoustic, and thermal. And what does it represent? Gesture, facial expression, motion, eye gaze, respiration, brain activity, dermal activity, heart activity, muscle activity, speech, body, noise, nonverbal articulation, and body temperature. Fat and muscle have a different amount of shadowing. Muscle conducts energy better. Fat transduces it better. Yes, they do have your tissue separated that way. So in the same way we were in the paper, ransomware on cyber physical systems, which we're all a part of with NIST. And as we were going through the different updates for the 6G, we came in here to the role of 6G in their smart city application. So one more time, we have all these different devices, the video cameras, the drones, the bio signals, the internet of industrial things, your house itself, the LoRa with the power grid, you have your vehicle to everything when you're in the car, and the traffic lights watch you too. So non-invasive. The human activity recognition system for radar, video-based, sensor-based, radar-based, RF-based, environmental sensor-based, wearable sensor-based, smartphone sensor-based. What are we watching? Different types of human activities, static activities, stand or sit, dynamic activities, walk or fall, activities with postural transition, static to static, static to dynamic, dynamic to static, dynamic to dynamic. Yeah, they have no idea how to watch people inside their own homes. Odd, oh, no. Not a clue. Human body, nodes and sensors. Point cloud features, feature extraction. It does say algorithm. Yeah, it always does, by the way. And where we're headed is into what this is here with these neural networks and how they connect to the DigiTwin. Now, y'all have seen this paper multiple times. A radar-based human activity recognition using a novel 3D point cloud classifier. And all that means is that's the wireless watching you and adjusting your feature values. Yeah, it's an integral part of these sensor systems and the internet of everything, and it's already here. Sensing layer. This layer consists of physical components such as sensors and devices. These are used to collect large volumes of data from a diverse range of applications and gadgets such as smartwatches, surveillance cameras, home appliances. I told you, your fridge is watching you. Vehicles and medical devices. So I encourage you to read through this because there's a bunch of data here, especially for the nerds. Um, so that, see, there's V2X right there. Section three, 6G city, smart city applications, V2X, just like the Department of Transportation told us. And above it, the internet of things and the internet of everything, the terahertz quantum computing, AI, ISAC, okay? So moving on, there's your sensors. Now, the Internet of Bio Nano Things with the 6G terahertz IEEE. We're on the Facebook. How come they get to post it, but you guys always disallow the synergists, especially Dawn? 6G is poised to transform communication technology, building upon the advances of the global. 5G rollout. 6G adoption will unlock a new level of connectivity that not only improves bandwidth, but also drives innovation and accessibility with the help of AI and Internet of Things technologies. AI and machine learning end-to-end, -end, expanded verticals, optical wireless 
coalescence. What's that about? Stick with me, you'll find out. It's coherent optical routing. There are converging IP networks with optical only. No radio frequency, just bodies, light, and sound, and data all around in the form of all these sensors. That's how your fridge is able to be so intimate with you in ways you never wanted and how it locks when you go to it because the AI says you're too fat or thin or whatever. End-to-end -end cloud platform, new spectrum and topologies. So I will leave this search here for people as well because when it comes to the millimeter wave and the terahertz processing, some people are interested, some, they fall asleep, their eyes glaze over. <laughs> That's okay. Here's a really cool LinkedIn picture, if I can get it to come up. No, thank you. 6G enabled smart infra challenges, opportunities, and sustainability, terahertz communication, optical wireless, massive MIMO, cell-free communications, quantum communications, blockchain, mobile edge computing, and of course, drones, because that never goes away. Okay, and now we are at terahertz intra-body biosensing with the IEEE. Terahertz sensors for next generation, biomedical and other industrial electronics applications, a critical review, developments of terahertz metasurface biosensors, terahertz biosensor, molecular modes, non-altering non terahertz wave, biological system, hierarchical orientation, shape and function. Let me get this a little bit zoomed in here for you. This is that science direct. And the metamaterial itself, how strong it's coupling, chirality, and enhanced absorption. Advances in terahertz biosensors toward photon molecule interplay. Now, what I do is I bring people through papers quickly, and then I will revisit them as we continue to add in what we're learning. Okay, so I'm just this one is going to be on our bingo card. Advances in terahertz biosensors toward photon molecule interplay. Track Trends in Analytical Chemistry, Volume 175, June 2024. Ellis The fundamentals of terahertz waves and the current technologies used in biomolecular sensing applications are overviewed. The distinctive features of terahertz biomolecular sensing techniques are discussed based on their unique characteristics. The latest advancements in terahertz biomolecular sensing using metamaterials are described in detail. The opportunities and remaining challenges for next generation terahertz sensing applications are outlined. Okay, so we'll be coming back to that. Now this one is the ITU-IMT 2030. For those of you that know 2030 is already done and that we're looking into the 6G is being deployed. There we go. Free 6G training, ITU-R working party 5D workshop on IMT for 2030 and beyond. User experience data rate, area traffic capacity, peak data rate, energy efficiency. Yeah, so the technical details. Let me grab a different one here. I like this one better. Keywords in the presentations and mapping with IMT Vision 2030 and beyond. 6G standard by the year 2030, interconnection of terrestrial and non-terrestrial technologies and revolutionary use cases with new and enhanced requirements, sensing and communication and efficiency. Okay, hang on. 6G Vision and Candidate Technologies, China's IMT 2030 6G Promotion Group releases 6G white paper, new network with native AI. These are the 10 candidate 6G technologies. A new network with native AI, new air interface with native AI, new network architecture with native AI, enhanced wireless air interface technologies, basic physical layer technologies, ultra-massive MIMO in-band full duplex. Wireless transmission technologies on new physical dimensions, reconfigurable intelligent surfaces, ambient backscatter and all the, your plasma polaritons with your cubes at, Orbital angular momentum, intelligent holographic radio, number four, terahertz invisible light technologies, terahertz communications, visible light communications. <sighs> number five, integrated communications and sensing, distributed autonomous network architecture, deterministic network, computing aware network, integrated terrestrial and non-terrestrial network, 
Native Network Security Based on Multilateral Trust Model. Immersive Cloud XR, now we're to the use cases, eight of them. Holographic communication, sensory interconnection, like I took you to where they're reaching through your hands and your eyeballs. Intelligent interaction, communication for sensing, proliferation of intelligence, digital twins, global seamless coverage. So I'll leave this search for those of you who are working on things as well, because these are your ITU standards, that's all it is. So, the future of European telecommunications in-depth analysis. Do, do, do. Market and economic regulation. Yeah, this looks like the entire thing. Do, do, do. Telecoms, resilience and security. Sustainability goals. Okay, 166. Dear Lord. Because this is what we all want to be doing all the time while everybody just stares us in the face and gaslights endlessly. It's so disrespectful. It's so incredibly disrespectful. And that's why I keep begging people to talk about this like adults. You piss people off so bad as it is. Now you're just going to turn on them and just say, well, there ain't nothing else we can do because we've wrecked it for 50 years. So fuck you. Hoping that they'll go to war and fight each other some more. It's so incredibly gross just terrible human behavior, you know? <sighs> Trying to have dialogue. No, clearly we're not. Okay, none. Yeah, sustainability. Here we go. Yep, there we are. The contribution of ICT to greenhouse gas. There's your environmental ambient sensing as demanded by all their climate change complaining. <laughs> Sorry, if you got weather control, it should have been handled not like this. ICT is not the primary contributor to environmental impacts in Europe or elsewhere. Um, hang on, let me double check that acronym. Come on, where are you at? Sustainability has been a key focus of the European institutions in recent years. 2019 communications on the European Green Deal and subsequent 2020 communications set out a target for European Union to achieve climate neutrality by 2050 with an interim target to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by at least 55% by 2030 from 1990 levels. In June 2021, the Council and Parliament adopted legislation that enshrines these objectives into Europe's first climate law. Available literature suggests that the ICT sector, I, was, I'm, I know what it is in telecommunications, that information communication technology to uh, sustainability to change out air particulate. So it's gotta be along the same lines. Anyways, hang on. Yeah. All the different sensors and technology, there it is. That's your cognitive CAT. Uh, let's see, in 1.3, sustainability targets for ICT. In this context, the European Green Deal communication emphasizes that the digital sector itself should be sustainable at its heart, and the Commission's digital strategy underlines the need for the ICT sector to undergo its own green transformation, and proposes that by 2030, data centers and telecommunications can and should become climate neutral. The 2023 European Declaration on Digital Rights and Principles for the Digital Decade also includes commitments for member states to support the development and use of sustainable digital technologies. See, sustainable means we're using human energy instead of other types of energy too. Just keep that in mind. It's a tokenized bioeconomy. No, I am not being hyperbolic. Incentivize sustainable consumer choices and foster sustainable and responsible corporate behavior throughout the global value chain, blockchain of digital, well, digital ledger technology of digital products and services, promote the development, deployment, and active use of digital technologies with a positive impact on the environment and promote sustainability standards and labels for digital products and services. So responsible corporate behavior, wait, Incentivize sustainable consumer choices. Well, when you get your universal basic income, you're only allowed to purchase what they allow you to. Goes with your DGIV too. All right. And this is where we break off out to West Point. So mark 536, amen. And we will continue forward with the quantum sensing and application.